Hello. I'd like to talk to you about weaving in the ends on your mittens. I know I've showed you a video about that before, but I thought I'd break it down in smaller chunks for you and show you each different piece in a different video so that you can get to the part you want to see a little bit more quickly. We'll start today with the little wrist bit, which is where we cast on our very first row. And we'll start by just taking those other ends and moving them out of the way and focusing on one. I'll take the tail and I'm going to thread it through my darning needle. Like that. And then pick the mitten up so that the wrist faces you. You can look at the edge to kind of see the pattern you're going to want to follow so that you can get rid of that little jog here and smooth it out so it looks completely seamless. What I do is take that tail and tuck it right behind the slip knot. This was our slip knot in our very first stitch, so that's why it looks different than everything else. So we'll tuck it right behind the slip knot in that little purl stitch and pull that darning needle through with the thread making one straight edge stitch on the front. And then we're going to go up and grab our slip knot to anchor it in on the back side a little better by sewing through it. This can be a little tricky because the slip knot is tighter than the rest of the stitches, but just work your needle through there to get that slip knot on the tail and pull it through and that pulls it to the back side and you can't see it as much. Then we'll follow along with our pattern on the back of the mitten and go up through that little pearl stitch. And that'll smooth out the back side. And then to get rid of that last little jog, go under the little edge you made and then we'll wrap it one more time to the back. I like to find that little pearl next to the slip knot and go through there and then at this point some knitters will go ahead and weave uh, quite a few stitches in duplicate stitch but I tie a little knot to secure my end so they don't slip out. So I take the yarn off the darning needle, set that aside, and then we'll split the plies once we have these tails sorted out. So we'll split the plies on the yarn. You see how it is a four ply. So take your darning needle and put it between the two and split it in half. Place one half on the darning needle. Straighten that other end a little bit. And then we're going to wrap that piece around the stitch that it's anchored to. to make it come out where it was coming from, right next to the other side of the tail. And all that does is tie that little bit to one stitch so your tail doesn't slip out. And then I'll tie a knot by lining each side of that in opposite directions and then picking them up with opposite hands. So the right hand picks up the left side left hand picks up the right side and we cross them and tie a knot and bring it down to the knitting. Don't pull too tight, just bring it right up to the edge of your work. If you pull too tight, your stitches run. Lay those down and then switch hands, making the same knot again and pull this one tight, but if it starts to slip, 
Then stop pulling and make one more knot in the same way. If it doesn't slip like this, pull as tight as you can and then you can trim the edges off. Right near the knot, as close as you can get without clipping the actual knot or any of your work. And you can get rid of those little bits of yarn and you've finished out that cast on edge. If you tug a little bit to sort of even out those stitches, the little knot gets hidden on the back side of the work right next to the slip knot and you can barely see it. And your edge has evened out and completed the circle now you're ready to move along and weave in the rest of those ends. Next we'll do those two bind off edge ends. I hope that you found this helpful and I hope that you have a wonderful day.